Hey everyone, Tang with Jag here, and today I'm going to do a quick video of the ENC M733. Uh, these we carry in a couple different flavors from retro to new style. This is the M733 version, which has a carry handle and old school slim handguard. So this takes apart like any other typical metal M4. The nice thing about these ENCs is the great value they bring. Uh, they're not typically the most fanciest guns out of the box, but that's good because those who like to fix up or tune their guns the way they want. They probably don't need all the unnecessary proprietary things that a lot of other makers add. Nothing wrong with those if that's what exactly what you want. But if you want to custom tune it or upgrade it how you want to here, or maybe gut it out and put an HPA engine, for example, this is a great basis and you have a very nice high quality metal body. So this one's a front wired gun, very classic. There's two connectors to disconnect here as we take it apart. And you'll always remember that when you take apart a front wired gun to gently take the upper and lower apart, you don't want to yank on the wires and rip the connectors off or, or fray the wires. These have threaded body pins. They're not captured or anything, so they come out pretty easily. I feel like that's a missed opportunity. They should have put a captured body pin, but that's just me. So once you have it off, you're gonna fiddle with the wires a little bit. This is just so you don't rip them out. So once you have them off, you'll see that the hop-up chamber and barrel come out. This is a brass 6.08 millimeter and a plastic large dial hop-up, kind of pro-in style. And then you have the gearbox here. Something to note about the handguard itself, uh, they come apart. The spring for the handguard is a little bit on the stiff side, so you have to have some hand strength. They don't make it as easy as the typical uh, two-piece handguard type springs you find on cheaper AEGs. They opted to go with the realistic style. Battery you can fit in there is going to be a two or three panel LiPo. You could probably squeeze a 9.6 in there. I have not tried, but the LiPos uh, work very well on this. This is me removing the functional bolt catch here. This is something that absolutely has to come out before the gearbox does, otherwise the gearbox won't come out. Motor grip is standard with the metal plate and large adjustable flathead screw for the motor height. So I'm going to take out the motor for you. Connector is a little bit tight, which is a good thing. That means it won't come off while you're shooting. And here we have the motor. Standard torque motor here. Uh, it's not too torquey, not too speed enhanced. Seems to deliver about 12 to 14 rounds per second on a nickel motor hydride and 15 to 17 on a lipo battery, 11.1. Buffer tube is kind of realistic where it has a castle nut. And uh, oh, note that there's silver corded wire throughout, so they use very nice wiring. Switch assembly is a standard type though, so you can change it to whatever you like, or if these ever burn out, you can replace it with standard parts. And that's the name of the game with the ENCs. Though they make some slight alterations for improvements, such as this uh, quick change spring guide. Everything you see is pretty much standard version two, so you have you have the option to replace it with whatever you like without any serious modification. Spring guide comes out like that, and it's an irregular pitch spring, and it shoots about 350 FPS with point twos out of the box. Here, I'm gonna remove the bolt catch system now that's part of the gearbox. It obscures one of the screws that needs to come out before I open the gearbox. So we have the spring out so nothing's flying apart, and we're gonna remove all the screws for the gearbox. You'll see here also these are uh, steel caged eight millimeter bearings. They spin very nicely. And your typical brass cylinder. All right, so I have this apart and voila. Okay. But I've been saying that everything's standard beforehand. It's not to down talk the gun, actually it's a benefit. Um, some parts a little bit too standard like this piston here with all plastic teeth with one metal tooth. Um, it's very ordinary, works fine until it doesn't. So I would replace it with the metal tooth rack piston right away or when it breaks. The bearings spin freely enough and the gear set is kind of your typical steel gears that you find in most AEGs. So the quality there is pretty good and, or on par, I would say. Shimming out of the box is a little bit on the loose side or lacking. It spins freely enough, but will work on a gun in the future that will address the shimming and we'll see what it's truly capable of. 
your box shell is kind of standard version two with the, with the small changes I mentioned. And there's the standard switch, by the way. Oh, I didn't mention that the uh, compression out of the box is pretty good. Uh, this is with all the components assembled already. It has a nozzle without the O-ring and the cylinder head is just a standard plastic or um, polycarbonate type. So you can with confidence change this to whatever you like. You could do uh, CNC brand gears, Siege Tech gears. Everything should go in without a problem. Bearings look serviceable, so I wouldn't change that unless I had to, which you can go for modify ceramics if you like. Nice thing about this is that everything fits perfectly. So the specs and the tolerances are very good. I hate on the lower grade gearboxes or the ones that are kind of made on poor tooling where things just kind of fly out no matter how you put them. This one, you know, my little litmus test is uh, make sure that the trigger can stay on its own with the spring on. And if it kind of just twists itself out, then you know, it's not, it's just kind of put together kind of meh. So we secure all the Allen screws, kind of tighten the star pattern, or it should follow the star pattern. Then we'll get it back together and we're good to go. So that's kind of the brief overview of what's inside the ENC here. And you can expect that across the board for all the ENC guns we have. The E324, 326, and 854, that's the striker model. Uh, the classic ones will be front wired. So that's the XM177 and M733 that you see here. And then the striker will be the classic rear wired, more modern carbine. So for the value, I think it's pretty good. Parts aren't too mind blowing, but they are highly functional. So for most people out of the box, it should shoot fine. So for my next project here, I'm gonna have one of these guns apart with upgrades thrown at it, see how it functions, make sure everything fits correctly without any serious modification, just to show that it has a lot of potential. To do this, I'm gonna have someone else upgrade the gun for me. We're gonna have our tech Justin do it. The reason I want a third party to do it is because I want them to discover what's going on and I don't wanna introduce any of my biases. And then whatever he encounters, he'll let me know. Okay, we're concluding with the reassembly of the ENC here. So everything checks out. In case you didn't know, the spring guide is kind of like a cross pattern. So if you wanna apply some gentle pressure to compress the spring and then turn it like a key, little tiny turn until you see the teeth then you can let it out so yeah just to reiterate ENC gun full metal body very high quality the build and feel is really good uh, so they represent a tremendous value for the price point inside it's very good obviously there are some parts that most people would upgrade out of the box I would prefer probably to upgrade the motor and the piston off the bat and maybe the spring but this presents a good opportunity for most of you to upgrade your guns anyways, the way you like. And with the way everything's uh, specced out, you should run into no trouble with most aftermarket parts designed for Marui compatible gearbox. And that is where uh, it's incredible value lies. I think a lot of the newer manufacturers, they try to differentiate and go their own different directions and make things proprietary, which is good in a way, but bad in a way too. And you know, for those who know what they want or want to do it their way, this is probably the gun for you. And even if you don't like AEGs, the body is very, very high quality. I'd say the finish and everything rivals some of the better brands out there, but for a fraction of the price, you can just gut it out, put your HPA engine, and you'll still be well under the complete cost of some guns that some people gut out these days. Uh, so that's my two cents on the ENC series guns and the overview here. So hope you enjoyed this tabletop style video. I'm gonna get this completely assembled and put away and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys.